How to create your own polka dot fabric background in DaVinci Resolve 18.6. Inside your project's edit window, go to Effects. Underneath Toolbox, select Effects and go to drag a Fusion Composition Edit to your timeline. Right click on this Fusion Composition Edit and select Open in Fusion Page. To first create the polka dot, First ensure that the nodes are deselected by clicking anywhere in the empty nodes grid in the fusion window. Hold and shift and press space to open the select tool menu. Use the search box at the bottom of this new window to find the S ellipse node. Select this and go to click on add. Select either the left or right view options underneath this new node to see a preview of the polka dot shape. With this new tool selected, go to inspector and underneath controls, we will first reposition the polka dot by changing X offset to minus 0.5. To shift the polka dot up slightly, change Y offset to 0.25. Now to reduce the size of the dot, change width and height to 0.04. So that we have a small polka dot partly revealed towards the top left corner of the canvas. In order to duplicate this polka dot and create a whole row of this, ensure that S ellipse 1 is still selected, hold and shift and press space again, and this time go to add an S duplicate node, which should be automatically connected to S ellipse one via the yellow arrow. To create duplicates of the dot, with S duplicate one selected, under inspector and controls, increment the value for copies to five. And to spread these out horizontally towards the right on the canvas, we need to increment the value for X offset. Here in this example, I will change this to 0.2. Now to create the second row of dots, with S duplicate one selected, hold in shift and press space, and go to add a second S duplicate node. With this new node selected, increment copies under inspector and controls to one, and to place the dots on the next row towards the side slightly, we will change X offset to 0.1, and to move the second row downwards, change Y offset to minus 0.1. To replicate this polka dot pattern, Ensure that S duplicate 2 is selected and hold in shift and press space once again to add a third and final S duplicate node. This time increment copies to 2 to create enough polka dot patterns to cover this particular canvas vertically. Keep X offset set to 0 to ensure that the pattern is consistent throughout and shift the duplicates down by changing Y offset to minus 0.2 so that there is a consistent space between each row of polka dots by minus 0.1 on the Y offset property. To ensure that these polka dots are rendered on your final video, with S duplicate 3 selected, hold in shift and press space, and go to add S render, which will help process these S nodes. To tidy the nodes grid, I will select all five nodes that make up my polka dots from S ellipse 1 to S render 1, which you can do by selecting Control or Command if you're a Mac user and selecting each one individually and then holding Control and press G to group. With the group node selected, press F2 to rename. I will rename this tool as polka dots. Deselect this node group and go to select a merge option from the tool menu above the grid. Click on the gray box to the right of the polka dots group and drag your mouse cursor to the green arrow alongside merge one to make a connection and to make the polka dots appear in the foreground. Deselect merge one Hold in shift and press space, and go to add a fast noise tool. With this new tool selected and with the preview activated, under inspector and noise, to have the two gradient shades blend in together more, reduce detail from 2 to 1, and to make the darker shades stand out more, reduce brightness to minus 0.5. To increase the amount of colour variation on your canvas, increment scale to 3.75. Now go to colour. Double click on the black box next to color one and go to add your first color shade. This one will be darker than my subsequent one. I will use the code hash FF547F. Click OK once you've made your selection. Double click on the box next to color two and I will add the code hash FFDDF5 to add a lighter lilac color to the fabric pattern. To add the fabric line pattern to your canvas, with Fast Noise 1 selected, hold in Shift and press Space. And go to Add Scan Lines. With this new tool selected, under Inspector and Controls, to add more lines to the pattern and therefore reduce the thickness of the existing ones, I will increment line frequency from 5 to 10. 
To make the lines blend into the background more, I'll decrement line sharpness from 1 to 0.65. Keep line angle set to 0, so that the lines are positioned horizontally on your canvas. To make each of the lines stand out more slightly, I will increment line width to 0.55. I will keep colour 1 set to white, so that the darker lines become more obvious on screen. And I will change the shade option for colour 2 by double clicking on the black box. And I will enter the same pink shade that I used for colour 1 in the fast noise node previously, with hash FF547F used once again. Underneath Composite, at the bottom of Controls, change Composite Type from Overlay to Multiply, so that your selected colour shades stand out more. To add a distorted fabric pattern, with Scan Lines selected, hold in Shift and press Space, and go to Add Grain. With this new tool selected, under Inspector and Grain, increment Grain Size to 2. Click on the grey box alongside Grain 1, and connect this to the yellow background arrow of Merge 1, so that your fabric canvas appears behind the polka dots that we previously created. Select Merge 1, and under Inspector and Merge, change Apply Mode to Luminosity, to avoid having the polka dots appear too vibrant. Connect Merge 1 to Media Out 1. At present, the grain node that we added in Fusion triggers a grainy animation effect. In order to remove this so that your polka dot background is static, go to the colour page, with the relevant clip selected in the middle of the page, right click on your polka dot background preview window, and select Grab Still. Go to find a thumbnail of your polka dot background still, underneath Gallery in the colour window, right click on this, and go to Export so that we can go to use this in our project. First save your still as a DPX file, Type in the file name and click on Export. Return to your Edits window, hold in Ctrl and press I, and go to identify the directory in which your still is stored. Identify the largest size file, select this and click on Open. Inside your Media Pool Master Bin, you should find the thumbnail of your imported still. You can now click and drag this to your timeline to add it to your final video, in static form without the animated grainy effect. Thank you very much for watching, I hope that video is useful to you. If you enjoyed the content and wish to be notified about future uploads on this channel, please like, share and subscribe. Join me soon for another video, take care.